So first, let's start with characteristic radiation. So let's say coming back to the uh, electron model. So remember, so we are supplying a hundred kilo electron volt electro uh, electron beam over here. So let's say I just take out one electron from here and this atom over here is the atom from the anode. I mean, this is an atom from this particular anode metal. So let's say this 100 kilo electron volt electron hits a electron from the K shell. And because this particular energy is higher than the binding energy with which it was in this shell, that electron is now gone. So now that electron is a free electron. There is no electron over here. So there is a vacancy in some sense. So now this particular uh, state of the atom is unstable because there is a vacancy over here. So the nucleus will try to attract other electrons and other electrons will want to come over here at this vacancy. Okay. <clears throat> so now let us let us consider tungsten because so in mostly the cases always the target uh, element is tungsten. So the, these are the different binding energies of tungsten. So this is the K shell binding energy, the L shell binding energy and so on. Because there is no electron over here, what will happen is a electron from the from maybe again this is probabilistic. So maybe a electron from L shell can come to the K shell, and when it does this, it will. So this is a higher energy state because this is like a bigger number so minus 11,000 is greater than minus 69,500 again please uh, see the importance of negative over here so because of this the electron is going from uh, higher energy to lower energy so it will have to emit some energy because there's the energy should be conserved so while coming from the L shell to the K shell, what happens is a uh, X-ray is produced. What will be the energy with which the X-ray is produced? This energy is nothing but the difference between the binding energies of the two shells. All okay with this concept? Okay. So this is called as characteristic X-ray because this number or the energy with which the electron is going out, the, the number with which the X-ray is coming out is a characteristic of the element. So if you change the element to something else, then this number will change because the other element will have different binding energies. So this number is a characteristic of the element and hence the name characteristic X-rays. Okay, now this particular transition also has a name. This is called as K-alpha transition. The reason why it is K-alpha is the electron landed on the K-shell. So this convention is based on where did the electron land so because it landed on the K shell, it says K and alpha because it just came from the immediate next cell or shell, sorry. So because it came from L to K, it's an alpha. If, if, if it would have been from M to K, it would have been beta and so on. Okay, so now when this electron came from here to here, now this place is vacant. 
so what could happen is another electron from the m shell could come to the l shell okay can anybody say or, or tell me what will be the name for this particular transition yeah correct so because the electron is or it came to the l shell and because it came from the immediate next shell that's m so hence the name is l alpha what will be the energy or oh, the energy is just the difference between the two binding energies all okay with this okay so like this there is a electron cascade so now another uh, electron from a higher shell would come over here and all of this is emitting some x rays and that's how x rays can be produced so this is called as this is called an electron cascade so because of one particular vacancy it kind of started a domino effect okay the other thing that can happen is again these are probabilistic so it's 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 also likely that an electron from the m shell jumps to the elect i mean jumps to fill the vacancy at the k shell so this particular transfer is called k beta again because the electron landed on the k shell hence k and it came from m shell which is not the immediate but it's like the second shell from k hence beta and uh, this is the amount of energy uh, the, the this is the this is the energy of the x ray that will be produced during this transition all okay with characters yeah uh with 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 which cells no these are orbits electron orbits yeah okay so the question was are these uh, shells uh, electron orbits or something else so these are yeah these are electron orbits or we can say orbitals but no i don't want to go there so it's orbits for now okay and then the cascade could take place so now there is a vacancy over here so from so uh, some electron from a higher energy or higher shell could come over here and the cascade but again because this is probabilistic not every transition will emit a x ray not every transition will emit a x ray there is another process called as auger electron emission that can happen what's this so again let us just consider the same example so let's say there was a vacancy over here and a electron from the m shell jumped to the k shell to fill that vacancy so ideally for characteristic x rays there would be a x ray which would emit but there is another process called auger electron with auger electron what would happen is instead of emitting a x ray this particular energy will be transferred to a electron of the same shell and this can make the electron go out or exit the the shell so again so what is the energy difference so the energy difference over here is about 67 kilo electron volt because the binding energy over here is uh, 69525 uh, 100 so the difference is 67000 or 
k electron volts so this particular amount of energy is given to this electron by this particular electron and now this electron exits the atom notice the energy with which it is exiting the atom it is 64.5 can anybody tell me the reason for this why is this 64.5 so it got an energy of 67 kilo electron volts but it is exiting with an energy of 64.5 kilo electron volts why come on what do you need to exit a particular electron from the influence of the atom uh, guys come on this is easy i've been talking about this right how much exactly that's right so because the binding energy of this particular shell is 2.5 kilo electron volts so that much energy is supplied to make i mean to remove the electron and hence the only energy left is 64.5 and with that energy the electron will be uh, emitted so notice over here there is no x ray production so for characteristic ray there was a x ray that came out but when there is an auger electron so this particular electron is called as an auger electron there is no x ray production so this is bad so there is this that can happen because of which we can so usually we get less x ray than what could have been possible so how to know what takes place how do we know whether the characteristic radiation will take place or the auger electron effect will take place well the answer is again probability so the probability that the electron transition will result in the emission of a characteristic x ray is what is called as fluorescent yield the reason the this particular name is fluorescent because again the detector is present and if a particular transaction uh, if a particular transition uh, emits an x ray what will happen is the x ray will hit the detector and you will see visible light i mean the detector has fluorescence and that's the reason why there is this name called fluorescent yield because if there is an x ray the detector will detect it and uh, we will see the x ray so there is this probability so omega over here is a probability it can lie between 0 to 1 and that's a probability that a particular transition a particular electron transition from uh, any cell uh, any shell why am i saying cell shell any or orbit any electron orbit to another orbit uh, will emit a x ray or not so that's the probability for that so because there are only two processes hence 1 minus omega then becomes the probability that the transition will result in uh, ejection of an auger electron okay it is more probable to get a auger electron in terms of elements which have a low atomic number so those who have a low atomic number the omega for that is also low because only then 1 minus omega will be high and the probability of auger electron will be high all okay with this auger electron fluorescent yield characteristic x ray any questions doubts okay so so an application for this could be so let's say whenever we image x ray we image the bones and tissue so for calcium the atomic number is 20 so with this it is like a 75% chance 
that an auger electron will be emitted but for iodine whose atomic number is 53 there is about a 35 percent chance that an auger electron will be emitted and for uh, atomic uh, or elements who have atomic number greater than 60 there is only a 20 percent chance that an auger electron will be emitted.